today we're going to talk about motility or movement. And we're going to see that motility is an important quality about bacteria that enable us to differentiate them. And we'll see later on in the course that uh, these qualifications and characteristics are very important in terms of bacterial biology. Uh, so mo motility is important for a number of reasons. Uh, motility is, of course, the capacity to move. And both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have uh, a, a structure called flagella, but the flagella in these two types of cells are structured differently. But in both cases, they actually propel the cell uh, through fluid-based media. Now, prokaryotes also have another structure called the pili, and that is uh, an important ap appendage that's uh, unique to prokaryotes, and we'll see ways in which they function. So the prokaryotic cell in general uh, has several structures. It has these pili, which are projections outside of the cell. Uh, inside the cell wall and the cell membrane is uh, the DNA and ribosomes, of course, for protein synthesis. And then for this particular prokaryotic cell, we see there is one uh, flagellum. Now the pili, as we go through each structure, we'll talk about them. Now the pili uh, function in several ways. They're hair-like projections, and the larger ones are called pili, and the smaller ones are called fimbrae. Uh, the pili connect bacteria to one another, uh, and also they connect bacteria to different species. So they connect uh, bacteria of the same species and bacteria of different species. And this, as we will see, is very important in relationship to bacterial reproduction. So pili build bridges between two bacterial cells, usually to exchange uh, plasmids. Now we're going to learn about plasmids, excuse me, plasmids uh, in microbial genetics as well. So these plasmids basically carry DNA and they carry information from one cell to the other, and they can bring new functions from one bacteria to another. And this is a very important concept in relationship to antibiotic resistance. And pili can also form uh, reproductive bridges uh, where DNA uh, is exchanged directly. Now the fimbrae are, remember, smaller like uh, hair-like structures that protrude from the surface of the cell. And the fimbrae uh, function is to adhere to surfaces. So for instance, uh, some of these intestinal bacteria can use these fimbrae to attach to the walls of the intestine. But these fimbrae are also used to hold bacteria together in these biofilms. And so as an example, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea uh, can use these uh, fimbrae to help the microbes colonize uh, the mucous membranes in the reproductive tract. Uh, so here's an electron micrograph of E. coli, and you can see all these fimbrae uh, extending outside the cell, and these fimbrae are what the E. coli use to attach to the lining of the small intestine. Now, this is a picture of a bacterial under a bacteria undergoing what's called conjugation uh, through the pilus structure. And you can see that here the pilus uh, protrudes from one uh, bacteria and connects up with the other. And what is exchanged here is this mobile plasmid. Now, this is very significant because this new uh, bacteria here now has a plasmid from the adjacent bacteria. And what this can do is bring over new functions that the bacteria didn't already have. So in that sense, we could easily see 
that this could, for instance, bring over qualities from this bacteria here uh, in terms of being able to resist antibiotics, for instance, over to this bacteria here. Um, so the flagella now, so as we've uh, talked about pili, let's talk about flagella. So there are several different kinds of flagella. They, remember, occur in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but they are structured differently. So eukaryotes have usually one or more flagella that move in a whip-like fashion. The flagella in prokaryotes, on the other hand, they rotate like uh, counterclockwise or clockwise in uh, the form of a propeller. And the energy for the prokaryotic flagella is actually generated by ionic gradients. And the flagella is underneath the plasma membrane and the cell wall in both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So there are different types of flagella. So here there is what they call a unipolar flagella. A bipolar flagella has two. And a paratracheous uh, flagella is many. Now you can almost envision the types of movement that these uh, bacteria can engage in. So the unipolar uh, essentially can move in a unidirectional fashion. Now bipolar, if you can imagine the, if the uh, flagella lays flat, it can move unipolar, but it can also move up and down based on using both uh, sides of the uh, flagella. Now, the paratracheous uh, flagella, because there are so many of them, they can basically move in multiple uh, different kinds of ways. So the bacteria can alter the speed and direction of rotation and obviously are capable of several different kinds of motility patterns. Uh, these bacteria can move towards favorable environments or, of course, away from them. And they can also move uh, towards or away from uh, chemical stimuli. So for instance, bacteria can move away from various uh, secretory products produced by the immune system, for instance, or they can also move based on uh, glucose, uh, presence of glucose in uh, the environment or in, in the uh, human body. So these bacteria, have sensory capacities in terms of directing uh, movement in terms of uh, towards or away, away from things. Uh, so here is pictures of different kinds of bacteria and different kinds of flagella. Now the lactobacillus uh, actually doesn't have a flagella. The Vibrio cholera has one. The Pseudomonas looks like they have several but they're all, they're almost like unipolar. Uh, the spirillium has a bipolar and the E. coli down here, if you can see it, actually has a paratracheous uh, structure. So let's <clears throat> think about good questions uh, in relationship to the topic. So if we could develop a drug that strips the bacteria of pili, what functions could we disrupt? Well, that's a challenging question, isn't it? Well, we know that pili function to exchange plasmids. Okay, so uh, if we gave a drug that took away the pili, we would not be able to transfer plasmids, and the bacteria would also not be able to engage in reproduction. So basically, over time, administering a drug like that could actually eradicate the bacteria. Uh, but also, it could certainly um, help in terms of decreasing the capacity to become uh, resistant to antibiotics. Now, what about stripping the bacteria of the fimbrae? Well, obviously, if we did that, then the bacteria couldn't attach to the intestinal cell wall 
or the reproductive tract, for instance. So for instance, perhaps E. coli then would certainly uh, lose its effectiveness. So the second example has to do with what kinds of movement are produced by uh, bacterial flagella. So remember, we had unipolar, okay, and bipolar, and the paratrichias. And, but you can imagine that can, the, so the next question is whether we can predict the kind of movement that the bacteria is capable of. And that's a tough question, isn't it? Because the paratrichias bacteria could, if they flattened, right, if they flattened all the uh, flagella in one direction, could be unipolar. But then it can also certainly uh, travel in many different kinds of ways as well. Whereas the unipolar bacteria can basically only go in one direction. So that's the way to answer the question is to really think about, well, gosh, you know, what kind of structures uh, are, are apparent and then uh, in which ways do we think they could actually propel the uh, bacteria. Thank you so much for visiting educator.com.